Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey One, good vibrations at your service from interplanetary space to talk a little bit about transmatch designs. You will find this information and much more in my book, Ham and Shortwave Radio for the Electronics Hobbyist, due to be published in October of 2014. I will include a link in the description of this video to the Amazon page for this book. Figure 5-5 in that book portrays uh, four very simple antenna tuner designs for various types of load situations. You connect your radio to the tuner and then your tuner to the transmission line. In A and B, drawings A and B here, those are unbalanced transmission lines like coaxial cable. In drawings C and D, they are balanced lines such as ladder line or window line. And of course, the load impedance will vary depending upon the length of the line, the characteristic impedance of the line, and the actual impedance of the antenna. You wouldn't need a tuner if you had a one-to-one -one standing wave ratio, presumably, on an unbalanced load, because most unbalanced loads are 50 ohm coax, and if you have a one-to-one -one SWR on that, you don't need a tuner at all. So these tuners are intended for those situations where you have a high standing wave ratio, in these two cases A and B on a coaxial cable, and in the cases C and D on a balanced wire line. You will much more often find a high standing wave ratio on a balanced line, and even if the SWR is one-to-one -one on a 450 ohm line, you're still going to need your tuner to get that down to the 50 ohms that your radio wants to see. So here are the designs. At A, this is in case you end up with a low impedance, a low value of resistance in your impedance of your load. If, you, if that situation happens to exist, then this type of tuner is best, where you tap the coil on the load side of the uh, on the load side of the tuner. If the impedance uh, is high, and the resistive portion of the impedance turns out to be very high, you would place the radio at the tapped part of the coil. And when I say a tapped coil, I'm referring to a roller inductor, if you can possibly get one, because they're so much easier to adjust than uh, inductors with fixed taps. Just Google on the phrase roller inductor and you should be able to find them. Also at flea markets and ham radio conventions, uh, where they sell those stuff out of your junk boxes, uh, you'll often find them. This particular situation at C is more complicated than the other designs because it has two capacitors which are ganged together and a dual tap coil. Now normally these two taps would be the same distance from the center of the coil. So you could in fact have two roller inductors connected in series and then connect their shafts together with a gear driven mechanism to get your tuning uh, control. I believe that's actually done in some commercially manufactured true balance line tuner antenna uh, systems. So these two designs here are intended to truly tune a balance line. There's no ballon coil here. Ballon coils are designed for specific impedance ranges and values and ratios. And if you depart from those, they may give the illusion of working but they're going to be inefficient and you, you'll know that when you touch it because it'll be hot. So you can use these, you, the, the thing to do with an unbalanced line is to try either one of these circuits and use the one that gives you the best results. With a balanced line, the same thing. Try this design over here at C and if that doesn't work, try the design at D. Basically, uh, it's uh, the same uh, approach that I use when I'm learning computer software. Click on everything in sight. In this case, it would be test everything in sight. T-E-I-S. So that's it from here. That's all I have. Stan Jabalisco signing off once again, recommending that you 
pre-order a copy of this book from Amazon. Or if you don't like Amazon, get it from BarnesandNoble.com. Uh, I think they have it too. And I think Google Books probably has it as well. Stan Gibalisco, W1GV, saying 73 for now and so long. <laughs>